Hi everybody, I'm so thrilled to have here with me today Ulrich Hennes, who is the uh, founder of uh, Localization Institute, the co-founder and co-organizer of Localization World, and the executive producer of brand to global So welcome Ulrich. Thanks, well that I'm impressed. Yeah, that I remembered all of your functions. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us, um, like with everything that's going on, what are, what are the plans next year? Well, thank you, Andrew. It's good to be here. Um, we're looking at an exciting 2015 uh, at the Localization Institute and at Localization World. Um, we're going to be visiting the cities of Shanghai, Berlin, and Silicon Valley. Well, Silicon Valley isn't really a city, but uh, I think everyone knows what I mean. Um, we'll be in April in Shanghai, in June in Berlin, and in October in, in the Silicon Valley. In addition, we'll be holding the third Brand to Global conference in early October in London. So, so if our, our, our audience here wanted to prepare to, uh, to submit a proposal uh, for Localization World in uh, Berlin, what is the deadline and what proposals are you looking for? Um, well, the theme for this year's conference is the Internet of Things, which is a very broad topic, but I think it's seen by many as the next evolution that rather than localizing for people, uh, all kinds of devices are connected to people. Uh, you were just as we were driving up telling me that you can actually start your car uh, from your office through the internet, that your your car is... My iPhone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, through your <laughs> iPhone, iPhone, yes, yeah. iPhone. Yeah, so. And, um, and so, you know, that is just, uh, that will pose new questions, new problems for localization mm -hmm. to make sure that these devices uh, can uh, function and be uh, user-friendly in, 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 in the user interface. Mm -hmm. So any topic, any submissions on that will be welcome. And that is sort of, a, you can interrupt, but that yeah. is a very in, uh, um, interesting topic. So we have in our audience people that, you know, they, that might think, you know what, I, I would like to present at Localization World, but I'm not quite sure if, you know, if, if anybody would be interested. Um, what's your advice to these people? What some people do, uh, if, they're, if they really, if they're unsure whether we would welcome a certain idea. Some people just sent me an email and I've opened it and say, Ulrich, I would be, I'm thinking of submitting a proposal on this topic. Do you mm. think this would be of interest? Before I go and recruit other panelists, I'd just like to do a reality check. We are very open uh, to suggestions, so you'll find us very, very easy to work with. What are the topics that you find more difficult um, to organize? to find the right speakers and well in general it is harder to get clients to come and represent um, it's the nature of the beast that a vendor someone who sells either a tool or services will easily get support from their management to submit a proposal and also get funding to travel to the conference and present they get exposure which might help them do more business it's less clear for a client, right? If you work for a large corporation like SAP or, and you or own a- Rock End. Or Rock End, <laughs> or Rock End, a very large company. Um, you know, you might not, uh, your boss might not be crazy about spending a thousand dollars to send to this conference to tell them what, what the client company does. Some companies are extreme. They don't want their staff telling the broader industry, how they solve problems, yeah. right? But it's most of the time it's really more like a funding issue. In terms of topics, I don't see um, a pattern like saying it's very hard to get a particular topic covered. It's really more, um, I think for an interesting conference, we both want vendor presentations that show solutions that are being offered, but then also having the clients share you know, the challenges from, you know, talking about how hard it is to convince management to invest in language mm. or in technology, all the way to uh, just uh, how to best manage localization mm. projects. And that's right. So that, that's what I noticed is that the best presentations are those that just share information mm -hmm. rather than preaching or yes. telling people, you know, how things are being done or should right. be done. It's like, right. you know, here's what we are doing. Here's our you know, right. successes. Here are... Uh, challenges and then engage the audience in some kind of either discussion or, or yes. follow-up. Yeah. Can, yeah. can you, can you uh, 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, that is a con that is a constant battle for us as conference organizers that we want. We're trying to. We have like an early detection system to to see that these are not sales presentations or just kind of preaching, mm -hmm. but these are <coughs> presentations that both uh, talk about the failures and the successes in a project. You know, say here is where we really it went wrong, yeah. and we learned this, and then here it went right. Those are the best presentations. So we we I mean the interesting thing too is I think. In, to my way of thinking, smart vendors realize that even if they can get our early run <laughs> our early warning detection system, and they go and do this basically a sales pitch saying we have the best software to solve that problem. Look, all we can do are usually counterproductive. People don't like yeah. to be sitting through a sales presentation, but an honest presentation that is very factual, ideally with a client who can testify saying yes. Uh, ever since we implemented this tool, we have seen a marked improvement in speed or cost reduction or quality. And then saying, but here are areas where this tool really could be, still be better. And we're working with the, with the uh, developer that they add functionality here. I mean, those are wonderful because it gives the audience an accurate picture of what a product is capable of and what it is not capable of. So what I see, in, in, and I saw that it was very clear in Vancouver, yeah. we do have a new generation of, of you know, a new generation of people come in mm -hmm. that have a different approach to localization, really? a different focus, um, yeah. more on usability than uh -huh. functionality okay. or capability. Um, uh, you know, we have services and companies like Unbabel, uh -huh. Smartling, uh, CloudWords, yes. Easyling, that have a totally different approach from what we used to see mm -hmm. uh, even five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, does that generational shift reflect in the proposals that you're receiving? I think it is an interesting evolution there too that um, that some of these uh, solutions are geared for companies, basically tell companies you don't have to become an expert in localization, we are your expert mm -hmm. and we offer a very easy interface where we can serve you without you uh, investing a lot of time learning the rope, we, we are your expert, you're up and you can trust us. So that's, that's exciting because it's going it, it provides more access you know, to pe it provides quicker and easier access to a lot of companies who might be hesitant to make the investment of hiring an experienced localization manager who can, you know, slowly build mm. uh, a whole department, an internal department. Mm. Yeah. We had a meeting this morning where a buyer of technology said that his team, entire team, eliminated a number of technology vendors solely on the basics that they are too too difficult to uh, um, to use right? mm -hmm. and and the, the solutions that that are in the in the shortlist right. are all the ones that are intuitive easy to use yes. straightforward yeah. easy to access for the non professional user yes yeah. and uh, do you see that in, in the, is there a shift in sponsors and in your sponsors and exhibitors as well? Um, I sense? haven't noticed it so much in the exhibitors. Well, exhibitors, yes. I mean, many several of those companies that you mentioned have become regular exhibitors, and some of them also, uh, you know, have become sponsors. Smartling, uh, for example, uh, CloudWords is a is a sponsor of Brand to Global. So you know, clearly we welcome. Uh, them uh, uh, utilizing, taking advantage of the concept. But I think it's an interesting thing. I think overall, and to me, uh, maybe Apple is playing, um, has influenced that somewhat. I mean, so many people have, you know, are using iPhones, iPads, and now also, you know, are using that uh, on Macs. And I think Apple has pioneered kind of a a very sophisticated user friendliness, right? Uh, I mean, anticipating the hard thinking was done by people at Apple. What might people want to do, and how can we make it possible for them to do that without spending half an hour reading a manual, right? This intuitiveness. Not that they always uh, succeed, but I would, my opinion is that Apple has, uh, is one of the best examples of making it very easy and fun.
Uh, let me ask you, so what, what, what's your advice to, to the new generation of, of professionals that comes in? How, how to best navigate themselves, introduce themselves to, to the industry and make it? Well, I, this is going to be a self-serving answer, but it's one um, that is actually very consistent with my belief that I think conferences like the ones we organize, uh, Localization World, Brand to Global, are really good places to learn and navigate these new uh, developments. The reality is these things, yes, you can write an article, you can read posts, but there, there's, you cannot learn this at a university, these things, because it's the development, the, the change is too quick. So a really great opportunity, and this is not just our conference, you know, I would say I've always, uh, that's why I got into organizing conferences, because I have seen again and again that uh, amazing learning and collaboration takes place when people get face to face, when they're in one room together and they open up, and one of the things we try to do in our conferences is we try to create a very friendly and transparent atmosphere that quickly allows for trust to form. Because when trust is there, people open up and they talk not about the good stuff, the things that work, but also about the things that didn't work, uh, the challenges. And that's where the most, the best learning takes place. Because if you can go to an event and sit in a round table or so, and someone tells you that they tried what you were thinking of doing, and it took them six months and fifty thousand dollars to find out it doesn't work. I mean, that is, I perfect learning. So you know that is not going to work, or you might learn how you'd have to change your approach to have any chance of it succeeding. So I would say, I mean, my advice is participate in associations, participate in um, go to conferences, uh, and help. You know. Uh, be part of a group that advances um, the interest of, of localization.